a cat two. Uh, we want to see that thing to continue mm-hmm. to wind down in intensity. And this is good in the sense that the, the track that's further north was going to put it over land longer, as opposed to the one we were looking at yesterday, where it was more of a northwest motion, uh, basically up the west coast of the state, keeping the eye and the circu- center of circulation over water. Now that it has moved inland, it has more of a to- uh, an opportunity to spin down, if you will, or start to start to weaken. So now, as of the 5 o'clock advisory, uh, the hurricane is now down to a Category 2 position at 26.2 degrees north, 81.8 degrees west. Again, that's uh, in and around the Naples area, so about five miles north of Naples, um, moving towards the north at 14. So now we're starting to see the storm accelerate a little bit. And as that storm continues to pull northward, uh, that's where we're going to be seeing the speed of the storm moving northward uh, come up a little bit. So winds now at about uh, 110 miles an hour. That makes it a Category 2 on the San Francisco scale. We expect that northward motion to continue. The, it will continue to move north up I-75, and then eventually it's going to be pushing up into parts of the eastern panhandle. So we're going to track this thing for you and show you exactly what the computer models, the latest computer models are saying. So basically we're going to get a track right over Fort Myers. should be in the Fort Myers area shortly uh, certainly by about 6 30 or so we'll see the northern eye wall start to push into that area and then we're going to be uh, tracking this northward through charlotte county so it's going to go right over the cape charlotte harbor and then eventually northward up into parts of sarasota county and around the tampa bay area as well later on tonight early tomorrow morning and then up into the eastern panhandle for monday morning early and then eventually into georgia so notice that the system is going to be weakening uh, as we go through time, let's keep uh, going in, going through time there. You see around midnight, should get to Tampa. And then as we go into tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to be looking at the storm uh, gradually winding itself down as far as the intensity is concerned. So this thing's going to be a Category 1 hurricane by the time it makes it up towards the Tampa area. So much weaker uh, than what we saw as it made landfall as a Category 3 hurricane uh, down in the Marco Island area. So that track over land is really going to help things out quite a bit in causing the storm to wind down or spin down. A lot of times what happens with these tropical storms and hurricanes is that uh, they, there is a time or time period that it takes for the storm to spin down or start to weaken. And we're going to see that accelerated a little bit by several factors. The fact that it's going to be going over land. Also, we're going to be looking at that, uh, that, that acceleration due to some wind shear and dry air that is being uh, pulled into the system. So here's the presentation on radar. And the way, thing I want to point out to you is that even though there's still some rain here on the southern side, there's not as much. There's dry air that's out in the Gulf that's being wrapped into the circulation from the south. And so that's actually breaking up some of the rain on the south side. So the rain with the second half of the eye, if the eye's already gone through your location, we expect the rain to continue uh, to uh, to uh, continue across the area with the southern portion of the eye, but we do not expect as much rain on the south side of this thing as it moves through. So a little bit closer here, as you can see, the winds on the south side of the uh, hurricane are going to be coming in from the west and southwest, and as a result of that, we're going to start to see the storm surge. So once the wind threat, the wind threat was going to continue, so don't get me wrong on that. But once the hurricane begins moving north of places like Naples and, and Bonita Springs and Fort Myers, the winds are going to start to come back on shore. So all that water that's been pushed out of these areas throughout the day today is going to start surging back in with those westerly winds. The computer model forecast tracks do agree with that track up towards the north. So that's the hurricane center is pretty much locked into that right up I-75. And we have no reason to disagree on that. So those westerly winds are going to start really picking up. We're already starting to see that in coastal Collier County. So we should be looking at uh, an imminent threat of dangerous storm surge of 10 to 15 feet on the coast of the Collier County coast. This is going to be start spreading up towards the Naples area once the center of circulation begins to move into southern Lee County, which actually should be happening here in the next several minutes. We're still getting a northeast wind up into parts of Lee County and into Charlotte County, so this water is still continuing to get pushed out of these areas here. But once the circulation moves north of the Charlotte County line, Charlotte-Lee County line, everybody basically south of that is going to start to see those onshore winds And that's when the water is going to start piling back into all those areas, especially up to Caloosahatchee. And the big time storm surge is still expected to happen, but it's going to be happening after the circulation center begins moving north of your location as a result of those winds coming out of the opposite direction. So what kind of storm surge are we talking about? We're talking about 10 to 15 feet or, or 9 to 15 feet above ground level. So we're going to be looking at the potential for eight, nine, uh, for nine to ten to fifteen feet of water rise above ground level 
in the sections that you see that are in red, which includes Marco Island, Chukaluski, Everglades City, and, and Achapi, places like that, up towards the Naples area, we're going to see some parts of the Naples area that will be looking at that same type of situation. Now, let's go a little bit farther towards the north in the Lee County so you can get an idea of what the storm surge. This is storm surge potential at max high tide. So this is the worst case scenario we could be looking at with this storm surge coming on through. Let's go a little bit farther towards the north in the Lee County. So we've talked about Collier County here, and you can see where we're going to be looking at that inundation of water. If we go up in the Lee County, you can see around the Bonita Springs area, uh, San Carlos Park. Back westward to include Sanibel is going to easily be seeing uh, 10 to 15 feet of storm surge. Pine Island, Matt Lachey, the South Cape, and all the really all along the uh, Caloosahatchee River from North Fort Myers to uh, up towards downtown Fort Myers and then farther inland there uh, as you get up towards the Buckingham area and Sun Coast Estates. Now you get farther towards the north into Charlotte County, we're going to see significant uh, storm surge as well. The Mayaka River, also the Peace River, and into Charlotte Harbor, we're going to be looking at that the water rise there. Anywhere from three to six feet from the areas in and around the Mayaka, Mayaka River. But we're also going to be looking at a uh, significant storm surge also, especially the farther inland you go on the Peace River, uh, especially around the Salford area and Harbor Heights, where we could be looking at those storm, uh, storm surge values of 10 to 15 feet there. Punta Gorda, same story, about three to six feet there. And then a little bit farther towards the south, uh, those areas of Charlotte Harbor, especially on those, uh, those west-facing shores, where that's where we're going to see those water rises about 10 to 15 feet. So let's uh, go back to uh, let's go back to the radar and show exactly where the where the storm stands at this point to give you an idea of where the really strong winds are with the northern eye wall as it pushes northward, and also uh, with uh, the ne the next areas that are going to be seeing these strong winds. So you see the large circulation associated with Hurricane uh, Irma, which continues to pull towards the north. This is the northern eye wall right here. That is now lifting north of the Golden Gate area, and this extends back westward towards the Naples area. We've been showing you the live shots, showing the wind gusts that have been 100, 120, 130 miles an hour. And these wind gusts, although likely not going to be as strong the farther north it gets, given the fact that we're expecting the storm to continue its weakening trend. Uh, this is the week it has been in the past several days. That does not mean that you need to let your guard down. We're still going to be looking at a strong winds along this eye wall, at least in the vicinity of the eye wall, as it tracks northward. So if you can see right there, you see how wide it is. And so it'll be moving through Lee County, then eventually up into Charlotte County as it tracks almost due north at about 14 miles per hour. The movement earlier was north at 12, so it's picked up speed just a little bit. We expect it to continue to accelerate as it moves northward through west central and southwest Florida over the next several hours. So tropical storm force and hurricane force winds are now spreading even farther north now. Looks like we're seeing the tropical storm force winds getting up and around the I-4 corridor now. And the hurricane force winds are going to start pushing north of the Fort Myers area up towards Port Charlotte and Arcadia, places that have not been seeing those winds that strong. Your winds are gradually going to increase as well. Back towards Immokalee and LaBelle, looking at those hurricane force winds gusts potentially in the 70 to 80 mile an hour range. It's not out of the question we could get an isolated one up into the triple digits. But I think the strongest winds and the highest potential for triple-digit wind gusts is going to be in the vicinity of the northern eye wall as it continues to lift off towards the north there. Just to give you some timeline, uh, some time of arrivals, I should say, or a timeline of when you can expect the leading edge of the really strong winds with the decaying eye wall as it moves northward. 517 for San Carlos Park, 552 for Cypress Lake, 607 for Fort Myers proper, 619 for North Fort Myers, and the Alva area, northern Lee County, we're looking at 641. So this is going to be over the next hour or so. Lee County is going to be in the spotlight now for these strong winds as they push northward with the center of circulation as it moves northward across the area. So really, this whole thing is going to track right up I-75. And like I said earlier, it's a really a good thing that is moving over land because if this thing had stayed probably about 20 miles offshore, we could be looking at a situation with much stronger winds going all the way up the coast. The fact that this thing came inland at Marco Island and is moving over Collier County is putting it over land and allowing it to weaken some.